Today I'm going to be talking about lathe attachments for drill presses. guys so I have a little lathe that I just got and I was doing a little bit of turning and I thought it would be interesting to do maybe a little bit of a comparison I don't know a ton about turning um, so I kind of wanted to get a lathe before I judged this um, lathe attachment for the drill press too harshly and maybe I could do a comparison um, that might help help somebody out deciding if they're gonna purchase a mini lathe something like you know a budget model from Harbor Freight something like what I've got or if they wanted to go this route um, these are about I think uh, 40 bucks, something like that. And basically all it is is a rod and a base and a live center down here um, and a spur center and, and a little mini screw to mount your workpiece. Um, now I use this quite a few times uh, with minimal success. Um, as you can see the live center on this is broken. I didn't put too much tension on it but it didn't take much for that little pin in the center to just break right off. Um, so that kind of sucks. So that is done unless I want to drill it out and put another pin in there and I'm not sure it's worth it. But there are two main problems I see with this. Are this bar here gets loose. It didn't come with the set, but I put a lock washer on here and it still gets loose. It's just the amount of vibration. I cannot get this thing to stay unless I were to maybe weld it to this piece. Um, and I'm not sure that I want to do that. Um, the, other, uh, the other thing I, I see compared to a normal lathe it's hard to get tension on your workpiece. So what I mean by keeping tension on your workpiece is, um, say I've got my, it, which is why you need the screw center, because this center uh, will not work because it doesn't attach to the workpiece at all, unless you glue the end of it on, uh, which I don't know if you'd want to do that either. So, all right, say I screw this in here. So you're gonna pre-drill a hole, I'm going to screw this in here. The maple's kind of hard, so I'm not going to screw it in all the way. I'm just going to demonstrate for you. And then I mount it in my chuck. And assuming everything's lined up properly, and you can just twist twist your blank of whatever, this blank isn't centered because I just did this and it's just a scrap piece, but uh, you twist your blank or whatever on the screw center, which is great. Okay, so now I have a couple options. I can just try to put the center, the live center in the bottom the best I can and push it up hard and lock down my, my table, but I have no, the screw center is the only thing holding it and I have no tension pressing this to hold it center. Um, because look, look at this, look. So I push that up pretty hard, and I'll still have, if I push this, it's not going to take much to push this right out of the, look at that, right out of the live center at the bottom. So if you're putting any amount of pressure on this, think about, um, you know, your lathe tools, and you're, you're trying to get this thing turned around, and you're putting a little bit of pressure, well, it's going to be pushing the center of this out, 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 and the wood, no matter how hard the wood is, it's gonna, it's gonna take that indentation and it's gonna move it, push, it's just gonna continue pushing the, the wood around on the center and uh, it's not gonna stay centered. So the other option is to uh, drill out a recess in the bottom. And that's, that's probably my preferred method. So, okay, so we've got that center on the top and, and even with as much force as I could put on it in this hard maple, that's as deep as I could get the live center to go, even though I pushed pretty hard. So let's just drill out a recess and see if that works any better. All right, so now I have a little recess drilled in here. So now we'll try to mount it this way. So let's put this in, put this in, and that'll help center it a little bit. Um, and we'll lock this chuck down. And then also what we need to do is we need to try to push this table up again to clear any gaps that are between that to make sure it stays center. And it feels pretty secure at this point. Uh, now let's try turning with it. 
All right, now the first thing you're going to notice when you go to turn on this is that holding your chisel like this is super awkward and not conducive to getting very good curves or straight lines or anything. So that's the first thing you'll notice, but that's kind of the price you pay with something like this. I've also seen people use them where they tip the drill press on their back or on their side, use them that way. I can't tip mine on the back because my motor will actually hit the table first and it'll be off center and it won't, it won't stay. Um, so it's almost, it's, so, you pr so I pretty much have to turn it this way. Um, let's just see if we can get a quick cylinder out of this um, and see if we come up with any complications along the way. Okay, now the first thing you'll notice is that this bar moves. This is as as tight as I could possibly ratchet this down to this piece, and this bar still flexes. So my, my chisel is kind of going back and forth, so it's really hard to keep stable. Oh, the second, the second issue is that getting this bar close enough to where you can actually turn um, without having, you know, this two and a half inch gap here is nearly impossible, especially on my drill press, because the top, the the bar actually collides with the top. If you had a maybe a taller drill press um, than it would, mine's only an 8 inch, so it may work better that way. It would definitely be helpful to have my chisel closer to my workpiece. Alright, second issue I'm coming up with is that the drill press is most definitely moving while I'm turning. It cannot handle the force, um, the pressure that's being put on it, even from just taking off a little bit off this small blank. Um, so I'm going to clamp it to the table. Okay, well I've almost got it round, but this is going horribly. If you're going to use this type of attachment, make sure you're using uh, cheap chisels. But it's because of the distance to the workpiece, your the spinning piece is pulling your chisel down constantly. And so you actually end up with a bent ch chisel after using this. Um, let's switch to a, a skew chisel now and see if we can't get any better result. And that's near impossible. And these chisels are sharp. I just sharpened them. Even though they're cheap chisels, they're really sharp. I was actually just using them on the other lathe and they worked perfectly fine. So it's not a chisel issue. Um, maybe we'll work better with this scraper. Now look close at this. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there is definitely play in the bottom of this just from what we've been turning and what it is is it's just every time you you're pushing the chisel it's compressing the wood against this live center and it will not hold it because there's not enough pressure to push against the wood to provide 100 percent coverage um, and really keep it stable and that's probably one of the biggest problems i had with this so as you can see it's a very rough tool um, i got the lathe at harbor freight I got this lathe at Harbor Freight, and it cost me, oh, maybe, um, I think it was right around 90 bucks uh, for this lathe with using their coupons and everything like that. So 40 bucks for the, the cheap one, 90 bucks for this mini lathe, but you know what? I have no problem turning on this little lathe at all. As far as ease of use and practicality, if you're going to use the drill press to turn handles and knobs just for your workshop, Great, go for it. That seems like a viable solution. Uh, if you're planning on doing any fine work, though, you're going to need to get a better lathe system. All right, guys, well, there's kind of a quick overview and maybe a little bit of a comparison as far as if you're thinking about buying a lathe attachment for the drill press. Um, I could see it working, but there would have to be some definite changes, and I don't know if the changes are really worth your time or money to 
<laughs> to try to make happen when you can get a better unit for for not too much more. Um, that'll probably last you longer and be a better investment in the long run and, and turn out finer pieces ultimately. Alright guys, well there's kind of a quick overview of the lathe attachment for drill press, at least the ones one that I have. Um, I have the Shop Fox, it's a D4088. Um, if you're curious about setup or what comes on in the box, anything like that, you can click the link up here. I have another video showing that. Um, but I got a few questions when I posted that video of, of how well it works. Um, so I thought I'd just give you a quick rundown here. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to email me or post them in the comments. And uh, I'll see you guys later.